Greetings or good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. I'm Amanda, the host for the Bible Reading Challenge. And so this is another one of our Bible Reading Challenge interviews um, for the month of July. So I'm really excited because today we have the amazing Chelsea Wojcik with us. When uh, She wrote Bible Journaling with Kids. Can you say hi, Chelsea? Hi, everyone. <laughs> There's Chelsea. <laughs> um and she, her main platform where you can find her is BibleJournalingWithKids.com. And um, she's got a lot of great info and resources there. I might be there too. Yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> um, so afterwards, if what she talks about you can um, really resonates with you, you can go check her out on her main platform over there at BibleJournalingWithKids.com. So before we get started, I'm going to go ahead and open us in prayer. Hi, Jessica. Hi, Dia. Thank you for joining us live, ladies. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and open in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time that we have set aside just to talk about you and your word and its power. And I thank you for the words that Chelsea has prepared for us today. Uh, I know that they're really going to impact our hearts. And I pray that we glean off of her wisdom and her strength, Father God, and just fall more in love with you. And, and help our words to be your words today, Father God. And I just bless all the ladies who are watching live in the replay. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. I'm so, okay. So, you guys, I'm really excited to share Chelsea with you guys today because there's not a lot of other moms out there that I find that Bible journal with kids as young as I have. And so, she, our kids are all like almost exactly the same yeah. age. Yeah. And so when she reached out to me, we met through Instagram. She's an Insta friend. We've never met in person. She's I'm on in Oregon. And where are you located, Chelsea? Right now I'm in Florida. Right now she's in Florida. And so we are opposite yeah. ends of the United States. And so um, anyways, I she reached out to me. She told me a little bit about her book, asked if I wanted to be a part of it. And I was like, uh, yes, please. And I got to reading her manuscript and like a manuscript isn't fancy. And even just her manuscript, I was like, oh my gosh, this is exactly all the information I needed to know to Bible journal with my little kids. And she gives you like reading plans. And anyways, she is an amazing resource to have, um, whether you're a grandma and you've got uh, great grandchildren um, or your mom with kids, she's just a great lady to follow. So will you tell us a little bit more about yourself, Chelsea? Yes, good pronunciation of my last name. Everyone always fumbles over it and just says Chelsea W. So, <laughs> <not with that. laughs> uh, but yes, currently we are kind of a little bit homeless, if you will. We're living in a trailer um, while we wait for our house to get finished. We just moved from DC to Florida, the capital of Florida called Tallahassee. It's a small little town. It's been like culture shock to go from nobody talks to you in the grocery store to like everyone wants to know your kids names and their ages and where they're going to school and it's just like whoa it's, it's like a different country but it's been so <laughs> sweet and so good and I've had so many experiences having to bible journal on the go or with a small bag or not even at a table and it's it's kind of shaped me a little bit in a good way just to kind of transform my thoughts just about spending time in the word, even after writing a book about it. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that with us. I mean, I, sometimes when we go through transitions and seasons in life, they're not very pretty, <laughs> but it's okay. And yeah. I just appreciate you being honest and welcome to Tallahassee. That's yeah. Awesome. Where? <laughs> Yeah, okay, I know where that is in Florida. That's so cool. Yeah, it's, like, it's like, here's the Florida, and then it's up in, like, I get that some people call it the armpit. <laughs> I moved to the armpit. Well, I, I don't really have anything positive to say about armpits. They, can, <laughs> they connect my, help connect my shoulders to my body. I don't know. Yeah, that's something really good to say. <laughs> yeah, like, it's a boot. You could be in the crook of the boot. That's yeah, I better. could. Oh my goodness. Okay. All right, ladies. So today we, the purpose of our interview with Chelsea is to bring in a different perspective about how to apply God's word to our life. Because 
there, I give us a platform, like a, a ground level where to start in the Bible reading challenge about how to start applying God's word to our lives. But what Chelsea might say today might really resonate with you and click in your brain versus what I say. And so I wanted, I felt really inspired by God to host interviews like this because these women of faith have been doing this in their own personal walks for a while. And so I know that the ladies in the challenge could really glean from just our experience. And so I'm really excited that Chelsea has some stuff to share with us today. And she's actually been participating in the challenge too. So, you know, she's, she's been right in there with us guys. Yes. Uh, <laughs> all right. Are you ready for the questions? Ready. Ready. She's got energy, guys. Energy. <laughs> okay. So question one, what tips do you have to getting into God's word daily? Oh, God's word daily. For me, getting into God's word daily is about seeing it in front of my life. Um, you know, the minimalist movement is all the rage right now. And I live in like a camper. And so, yes, I'm all about the minimalist lifestyle, but I, for me, my Bible, my supplies, they need to be out in the open. If I'm constantly tucking them into drawers so that nobody can see them, including myself, then I tend to forget about them. And so for me, it's leaving my Bible like in the middle of the kitchen table so that when it's time to, for a meal, I have to touch it and move it or on the middle of the coffee table where I have to, you know, see it. And, it, and, and so many people think of like the Bible as it's glaring back at me. And, and that's not really what our Bible does. It doesn't glare at us when we don't touch it or spend time, time in it. Um, but for me, it has to be accessible. If I, if I need my pens, they need to be right there. If I have my Romans journal, it needs to be right there so that I can take it, you know, some people put them in their purse, their diaper bags, wherever, and just take it wherever they go. You know, they get the oil change and that's where they're going to be spending their time in the word. So for me, it's just keeping it accessible and also remembering that there is grace, you know, like I said, the Bible is not glaring at us and staring at us and there's not guilt. I remember after I had my third baby and there wasn't time for a quiet time really in my day. It was like I was sleep deprived and I would look at my Bible and I would think, oh, I was a failure today. I never touched it. I didn't open it. You know, some people even do the apps where they read their Bible on their phone. And even that was just like too much for me in that season. And I remember just feeling guilt about mm -hmm. the whole thing. I, I, never, I never spent time with God today. And my husband said to me, but God's your best friend. If you don't see your best friend in a day, they don't disown you or hate you. And it totally just sent lightning bolts through my brain because he really is our best friend. You know, he's not going to disown you or turn away from you if, if you have a busy day. So I just like for me, it's having everything accessible and easy to get to. And some people would think that as in the way, but Truly, like you have to make way for it to be in your day. Um, and then just remembering that there's grace. There's so much grace. He is our best friend. And sometimes days require flexibility and sitting back in that grace that he provides. <laughs> yeah, amen. I totally, I, I totally get that whole like trying to fit it into my day. And unless I have it like visually out, then it's so hard for me to read it. And for me, like when it comes to Bible journaling in particular, like if I know I need to Bible journal because I'm in a lot of ways, it's a, a job for me, but I obviously enjoy it. And so I, if I, I have to open my Bible to the section that I want to do scripture about. I have to leave it on the table. I have to get all my Bible stuff out and like have it there the whole day. Otherwise, I just get so busy doing things because, you know, three small children, you know, run a business or whatever. There's. You just have to, yeah, you have to make a way and you have to make it accessible. And mm -hmm. so that looks different for every other person. Yeah. But yeah, and then to remember that there's grace. There's always grace. And I like that idea of him being your best friend because I think about my best friend. And sometimes yeah. we go like a week without talking to each other. And I wouldn't suggest staying out of your Bible for a week unless there's, you know, like you just had a baby. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, 
yeah, he's, he's my best friend. Like he understands, he gets it. And he just, mm -hmm. his words there to minister to me. It's not like a have to, it's a get to. And yeah. so anyways, those are really great tips. Thank mm -hmm. you for that, Chelsea. You're welcome. <laughs> One thing I do with my kids so that it becomes more accessible. You were talking about leaving it open. I use those big binder clips. Oh, yeah. Clip in their Bibles this passage we're going to be studying next <gasps> so that it's it, they can touch it and they can turn to it. So it becomes accessible for them, too. That's really good. And that's also a really like my three year old when I get him like uh, his journaling Bible, because we have so many journaling Bibles. It's like, OK, that I get one for my three year old. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> having a big clip would keep him like on that page. Exactly. Because he's use like big binder clip. Yeah, he's like crayon. Next page, crayon. Next page, <laughs> like oh, honey. And yeah, you're not making this very fun. Uh, so clips. That's a good idea. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So number two, what is your favorite Bible study tool? Ooh, Bible study tool. This is so hard for me to narrow down because that's my personality. I'm the kind of person that reads like three books at once and just kind of picks it up where I left off. And I, I take delight in that. I know that not everyone has that personality. I know you don't have that personality. <laughs> My husband does not have that personality, but I do. I kind of get delight from jumping around and doing different things. And so it just kind of keeps me inspired, if you will. I, Personally, Bible study tools, I love reading plans because they're short, they're concise, they give me verses each day. I love a lot of like the journals that you can write in that give you space to process through specific verses. I love your methods on our reading plan that we're doing right now. And I love how you switch it up because <laughs> that, that goes, you know, to my personality and your jot methods and things like that. So for me, I kind of have like three things going on at once. And that's okay for me. I know that's not for everyone. But in that I had to realize that I can't keep up, you know, three things floating perfectly. I've got this. I am a superstar. I had to, again, give myself the grace and realize that I'm going to get to this when I get to this. I remember a bunch of people on Instagram were doing like 100 day studies. And I felt just like, whoa, no, that's not for me. And so instead, I went and I did this 30 day study and, and I could handle that. But I realized that the 100 day study thing and, and the overwhelming feeling that I was getting through that, I was putting that on myself. God doesn't put that on me. He's not going to say you didn't do it in 100 days. You know, there's grace in that. And so I kind of have multiple things going on for at once. And so even though I got day 24 today in the Bible reading plan, I, I leave it unopened and I get to it when I get to that. Um, so yeah, you're someone who can't have, you know, the, what are those called? The little numbers in your emails that say how many. Yeah. That doesn't oh my bother gosh. me. <laughs> it doesn't bother me. I just say I'll get to it when I get to it. But so I enjoy the reading plans. I mean, people can Pinterest Bible reading plans and there's thousands and they're even, you know, printed, printable on beautiful, you know, flower paper and you've got it all going. I, I enjoy a lot of, you know, the, the Christian journals that you can go through. Again, that's something that can sit on a table or go in a bag. And you can get to it when, when you get to it. And I, too, enjoy the social media outlets through joining, like, subscribing on your page. Even aside from this Roman study, you're constantly sending tools and ways for people to get in the Word of God. And I take advantage of all of those things. And I feel <laughs> no shame because I, I get to it when I get to it. And if God wants to use this method that day or this week, He'll use it. He gets to you. He loves you. He's going to pursue you in whatever way you pursue him. So that's kind of my take. I, I, I do it. I do it all. I think that's awesome. And I mean, that's like, the, that's like totally opposite of my personality. I know it is. <laughs> I'm like, checklist, 
Check mark. Okay, so I read this. Now, did I jot? Did I jot? Yes, I jotted. Okay, let me go back and look over my declarations. Nope, I have to do it today because if I push it till tomorrow, then that will overlap with this and I can't have that. <laughs> so See, I've got it all floating around and it's okay. <laughs> we are opposites and I've known that for a while, but I love it. I, I, I take the light in it. I love that. And I mean, just embracing because God made you that way. Um, that's something that I came to realize in the last year, just seeing, learning more about like the gifts of the spirit and learning about different personality personalities that we all function better in different ways. And so I just really love that you've embraced that. And you're like, yep, I'm this way. This is the best way I function. Everyone's happier when I'm you know, having things floating when I'm like, oh my gosh, it's all going to go down. <laughs> <It's gonna fall. laughs> so I love that. That is so great. That is such an awesome perspective. Thank you. Thank you. Opening my eyes is what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> there are other ways, but I, you know, I admire you and your structure and ability to, to take a task and finish a task. There is, there is something to be proud of in that too. I well, finish it eventually. You do. <laughs> you wrote a book. That's a finished <laughs> task. Let's, you wrote you. two. You've got oh, two, right? Yes. Thank yeah. you, sweet friend. Yes. <laughs> That's a finished <laughs> task. <laughs> okay. All right. So we've got uh, the big question is, how do you apply scripture to your personal walk of faith? Oh, thank you for this one. How do I apply scripture? So you already know that I, I like to do things different. I, I have lots of things running at the same time. And you know that I have three kids. So I mean, really, truly time in the word kind of sort of has to happen with kids. Um, unless it's a rare day where all of them take a nap or have a quiet time and things just work out better. And I get to have that. Um, or I do it late, late at, at night. Um, so the reality is if I want it to be consistent, every day my kids are gonna be involved. And I personally am a visual learner. When people talk about like calendar dates, I'm like, oh no, I can't do it. Those are just numbers, show me on the calendar. I'm very visual, I have to see things. So the best way for me to process is when I can doodle or I can do artwork or I can, I can circle the actual words in my Bible, jot like we talked about earlier, all these ways when I can actually, you know, make it go from just words that I'm reading to actually sticking into my mind is, is the way that I process the word of, of God. Um, and so I'll, I'll show you some examples in a minute. But my kids are very, well, one kid, my six-year-old, he is so musical. And he is, he is like kinesthetic and he's go, go, go. And he has to touch things and move things. And so he, we actually do a lot of scripture memory and scripture reading with um, not only worship songs, but uh, where Bible verses are sung mm -hmm. to, to melodies. Um, and so he does a lot of time in the word of God where it's actually just music and he's memorizing things and learning things. And we'll just be driving somewhere and he'll start singing a song. And what do you know? It's, it's, you know, songs, straight up songs, and he's he's got it in his head. And so there's there's lots of different ways. No no way is right or wrong. Just like you said, we all process the word of God differently because he made us all differently and unique. So one of my uh, things that I'm using right now, my floating balls that I, I grab and hold on to as tools is this little um, journal that I'm working through. It's just inspired peace in the garden. This was, this was the journal I turned to when I was like, I can't do a hundred days, <laughs> and this is only 30. but I thought I would pull up. This was one of the Romans days and it's very visual. As you can see, I just hold on to the fact that he's like a lock. Uh, you know, those old like middle school, high school <laughs> locks that we used to put on our locker. He's like a lock and he locks onto us and he holds on to us. But this is just like another tool that exists where it's the Romans verse. This is Romans 8. <laughs> Your favorite. Um, My favorite. But so, and again, it was just, it was just a blank journal. Um, and I, I just take it up a notch and I truly process it and I, I scribble in it and 
right in it. And sometimes I even will rip pages to make my own dog ears and, and arrows and so forth. And so I really, I guess, make a, make a mess of it. Uh, you know, make, make up acronyms and, and doodle all over it. But my real way to process the word of God is, is to make it visual in some way. Um, that, that's what hits me. For example, like when I'm thinking having a hard day or feeling alone, you know, the days where a husband has to work late and I haven't talked to another adult and the kids are just touching me and touching me, <laughs> oh my gosh. right? It's crawling yeah. on me. I have bruises all over my legs from just their heels crawling <laughs> in my lap. Um, but just remember, thinking of that, that lock, like he's locked onto me. You know, I may not exactly remember the scripture word for word, but I'm going to remember that image that goes along with it, that God revealed to me. So making scripture visual is the way that it sticks sticks to me in my faith. I think that is so cool. And like, I like, I mean, you draw and then haven't you, you like ripped out of pieces of magazine and put, put uh -huh. in there. Here's, I was, there's I was looking at your stuff. I was spying oh, yeah, This you. is Romans 8, 35 through 37. And this little camera came out a one of, you know, when you have a baby and they, they give you the free diaper bag at the hospital and the mom magazines. This was out of like a mom magazine. It's just a camera and it says, he captures my heart. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. And that that's kind of what I got from, from the Romans verse is just that picture. And so it doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be expensive or the nicest tools, these are just ripped out magazine papers. And truly, like that word capturing in the camera, it, it sticks with you. And so when you see an old vintage cam camera, your brain is going to go, oh, that's like, you know, how God captures my heart. He knows it. He doesn't even need the picture. He knows my heart. Um, so that's, that's what works best for me. <laughs> I think that is so awesome. And that's just such, I feel like, in our Bible, like our Bible journaling world, so many that will resonate with so many women because I mean, it, it takes it, it's a kind of a skill sometimes that's learned equating like pictures with words, yeah, but it can be so basic. And once you like start getting into it, you it just starts coming so much more naturally. And so, whenever I am like having a bad day or I'm like remembering how far I come, like I remember my my Cinderella, and I just think. Like I'll even like start kind of like playing like I'm in the dress almost, you know? Yes. And so that is something that really helps me too. So thank you for sharing that and those really specific examples. That's really great. Thank you. It's my yeah. pleasure. You yeah. need girls to play dress up with. I, I do. <laughs> All I got boys. I'm a good boy mom though. I'm pretty rough. Yeah. So. Okay. So last question. Uh, what is your favorite verse and why? Oh my goodness. This is so hard. My husband's one of those people that has like the life verse and he like chants it over himself. And <laughs> I think that is beautiful, but similar to like my style of everything kind of floating and my personality is to just apply what's there right now. And it speaks to me. If I were to pick like favorite chapters of the Bible, it would be Romans and James. James is mm -hmm. always convicting. It always, mm -hmm. it's like the how to book. So if you're struggling with something, it, I, I always go to James because it just, it's like, oh yeah, that's right. That's the kind of attitude I'm supposed to have. Um, I like right now in our Romans, I'm loving Romans three, where it talks about all of us have sinned and fallen short and what God does for us. And it's not, sometimes I struggle with, I got up early, I worked hard, I did everything right today. And then I'll, you know, kind of glare around at the people around me going, what did you do, right? Sinner, right here, sinner. <laughs> I know, right? So I just do it all right, but like, heart. <laughs> get off your high horse. We're all sinners. You know, even me doing that is like my pride and sinful nature just gnawing at me. And so just having... Have, the, the Romans three was was super convicting and reminding me that I'm a sinner just like everyone else. And praise Jesus that we have Him 
because we all fall short and, and he's there to, to be our, our rescuer. But James and Romans are my favorites for sure. Even my husband says, we should paint a family verse next to our dining room. And I was, I was like, I don't even know how to pick one. So I'm praying, <laughs> I'm praying for that, that God will just say, you know, this is a good one. This can represent you no matter what season, because I don't want to commit. That's the thing. Like, oh, <laughs> what if something changes and it doesn't exactly fit, right? Oh, that's so silly. That's so silly. <laughs> I know but- that's. We are in the same boat, like with a family verse too. Like, oh, let's pick one. And then wait, we want to pick a whole chapter. Why don't we just put the whole book? Can we maybe write the whole Bible on the wall? <laughs> it would just be great. Can we do that? It's I true. Totally get you there. Yeah, that's, that's kind of where I'm at. But I'd like to have a verse that represents me, you know, that represents what God's done, my testimony, because that's not changing. And I really should be able to, I should be able to have a favorite verse. The fact that I sit here and just say, I don't know. It's a little bit convicting. I I should find something. Thank you for, for poking me and inspiring me to do that. But it right now I'll say Romans and James. (laughs) Okay. Those are great books. (laughs) So that those are great places to start. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. And you're welcome. (laughs) It's not the first time you've convicted me and challenged me in some way, Amanda. <laughs> well, I'm glad. That's what I, I, I like inspiring people, but I also do like challenging people yeah. because it causes a little bit of heart reflection to go on. And I can't do that for you, but no. you can do that with the Holy Spirit. So, yep. and you're good at listening to him. So thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> um, all right, guys. So what we're going to do now is open it up for questions for Chelsea Um, And so Chelsea's a great person to ask questions about, you know, how to Bible journal with kids or how you Bible journal on the go or, uh, you know, making those pictures and putting it all together. So go ahead and you guys can go ahead and type questions in the chat. But while you guys are thinking of those, I have a question for you, Milady. Can you tell us a little bit more about this amazing book you wrote, Bible Journaling with Kids? You're so sweet. Yes, this is Bible Journaling with Kids right here. You'll see it's about as thick as a magazine. I purposely wrote the book to be short, concise. Here's the information you need. I used a lot of photographs through the book because a picture is worth a thousand words. Who has time to be really reading this book that's super thick? So I purposely made it really short. There's pictures throughout. When I started, you know, kind of explaining, why do we do this? What is this good for? I tried to make it easy to read. For example, it's question, answer, question, answer, question, answer. Uh, I just, I really wanted moms or grandmas or teachers, pastors to just be able to pick this up and go and not have a lot of time wasted in reading my words. Um, So this book started by necessity because it didn't exist. There was nothing out there that, that people were really experiencing the word of God with kids. You know, there's VBS resources and there's all kinds of like workbooks with like printed sheets that you work from. But, you know, from my personality, you can see that I, I, I kind of go with the flow and, and do my own thing. And so I needed something that really allowed creative processing, not like a worksheet. And so that's what I started, Bible journaling with my kids. And I started posting it on my personal page and people kept saying, I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this. And I'd written another book and people were like, can you just write another book? Can you just do another book? Please, can you just do this? And finally, I, I prayed about it and prayed about it. Like, God, am I supposed to do this? And one, and then I'll never forget this. My little girl, she was three at the time. She marched in to the living room when I was just praying, trying to figure it out, kind of like typing what, what it could look like. She walked in with her Bible and I wasn't even talking to her, nothing. She plopped her Bible in the middle of the living room floor, opened it and started speaking scripture and flipping through the pages, looking at her picture saying, God is bold. He is my strength. I am beautiful oh. as she was flipping. And I saw that and I was like, oh my God. okay, I'm supposed to write this book right here. And that's, that's really what started it. Um, just seeing God's scripture 
stick to my children. I realized that there was power in that. And so I, I started writing the book that nap time, that day, that very day. And it's, it's pretty much separated into units and they go up in like artistic technique. The first ones are just, you know, how to hold a colored pencil and simple things like that. But then they get into more complex um, artistic skills and things like that. They build on each other. And each unit is unique in the supplies that you use and the techniques that you do. So it's, it's a fun resource. It's not my, you know, the go-to, the, the holy grail of, of, of resources. It's just something that exists. So, and I happen to write it. But. <laughs> By the way, it's a great resource. And yeah. I wrote it. That's, my, that's awesome. my book. We do a lot with our website. We have, a lot of resources listed there because if I see something good, I'm going to list it for other people to use. It doesn't matter if it's mine or not. In fact, I don't think any of the resources right now are from me per se. A lot of them are other people like you or things that I've come into contact with and thought it was awesome. So I listed on the website. So it's a great tool. That's my book. That is so awesome. We're getting a lot of great questions over here. So number one, where can we get your amazing book? Oh, uh, thank you. I actually haven't released it to book distributors quite yet. Um, just, just because I wanted to wait a little bit time. I wanted to have like a slow release of the book. So right now, the only place it's available is through my website. And you said it earlier, but that's BibleJournaling.com. And it no, no, Bible journaling no, with, with kids, kids with dot com. Thank you. Yeah, don't <laughs> you what Bible journaling.com. I think I've checked that and I don't think it's anything. I don't know. Somebody probably yeah. owns it, anyway. though. Yeah, I'm sure someone owns it. With kids. Thank you for, for fixing my words. Yes, BibleJournalingWithKids.com. And you can buy it there. I think it's like $13, and then shipping makes it a total of $15. And the resources last for a year. So it's everything you, you need and can do with your kids for a year. Yeah, you guys, it's her. Okay, so there are more questions. But that's one thing I wanted to know is, she not only gives you like, it's quick and like to the point exactly what you need. And she had like, you could do this, what, like a few times a week for an entire year. It's yep. like a whole curriculum. And yep. it's amazing. And it's this thick, like it's not going to overwhelm you. You're not going to feel burdened by the heaviness and how many words there are because it's pictures like your kids could follow along with the pictures. Yeah, it's amazing. It's Thank amazing. You. I have it and I actually plan on using it this afternoon. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll pick out a topic to study. Um, okay, so some more questions. Um, Jessica asked, how, do you, how would you suggest Bible journaling without a table? Ooh, without a table. Okay, well, like I said, when you're using like the journals, we just balance it. But we have these things called busy boards, which is just like a board like think clipboard big you know and and it fits super compact like a like a book would but I've also seen people use trays for example a cookie sheet where they can stack the cookie sheets like a family of cookie sheets and their book or whatever they're studying and then their pencils and highlighters all stay contained in the cookie sheet um, so we've done that in our season we do a lot outside on blankets. I should have brought, shown my bag. Like I use a lot of the pencil bags. You know, each kid gets a pencil bag that has their scissors, their two washies that they picked for the season and, and whatever markers or things that they have. And then I can just toss out, you know, the pencil bags, get the, get the fabric ones, the plastic ones break. And then they get mad that so-and-so's broke and, mine is isn't and so forth so get the get the the real you know like mesh ones so that's how i bible journal on the go without without a real you know setup if you will there's no shelves there's no there's no nothing we're on the go cookie sheets are cool that's awesome that's a great idea i never even thought about that okay so another question um where did it go any advice about how to host a Bible journaling fellowship session with a group of ladies at church? Oh, I love that question. I do have advice because 
I am someone who just entered a brand new community that is completely different than my community. And thus far through my churches, I, I haven't really seen anybody who's doing, you know, visual representation of scripture where I live. And so I've been going, okay, that means I am going to do this. I'm going to start this. And so I've done a lot of prayer and a lot of hunting for resources out there that are free and accessible and kind of occur often, you know, things that you can do often. Uh, the first things first is definitely find people that you can talk to, you know, because if you're being a leader and, and, and trying to pour into other people, you need to make sure that you're having time to, to process the word of God yourself. Um, but some of my favorite tools, I, I are, you can get to them through my website, but Visual Faith Ministries is one of my favorite because everything is free. They don't, they don't charge for anything and they have, they don't just have reading plans that you can get. They have, here is a project that we made and, and it, it's like you can print all 30 pages for every participant and they have all the tools they need. They, you just have to provide colored pencils or things like that. So if I'm hosting like a meeting or some or something to kind of bring unity in a community and just expose people to intro to Bible journaling, there's like bookmarks that are free. There's um, coloring pages that are free. That, that I, I usually go to Visual Faith Ministries, but there's so many other ministries out there that do this. You even have some of these things too. Um, yeah. And yours are pretty with colors and things like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's so many free resources. Pray up, have time for yourself. Do, set your expectations correct. Because for me, when I'm hosting an event, it's kind of like, yes, I'm going to be fed. I'm going to get in the word of God. And I'm just going to have so much quality time. It's going to be amazing. But it turns into you realizing that you really have to facilitate this thing. And so you you don't get a lot of quality time when you're the leader, when you're, when you're the one facilitating. So set your expectations, but it's beautiful because God, God uses you and you get to see like fireworks going off in people's mind. And then they're, then they're your friend for life because you've connected and, and God's used you to just show a brand new way of processing that it's so cool. So I encourage you, what was her name? Start with an L. Um, I'm looking. Sorry. Okay. Where did it go? Oh. I thought it started with an L. I can't. Oh, I can't find it. It's been buried now in the, in the. In well, Erica. The, Her Erica. Erica. I encourage you, Erica. Don't give up. Keep pushing towards. You will find community, even if you have to build it yourself. And no matter what, Jesus is your best friend. He's never going to leave your side. So you got a sidekick buddy to do all this planning and leading with so I encourage yeah. you <laughs> and it's so fun to do that sort of stuff with God because he just gives you things that you had no idea like mm. oh that is a great idea I wouldn't have thought of that and so mm. uh, yeah so you ladies are talking asking what's the free resource and I can't remember specifically their website is it visualfaithmen.com yeah. or .org yes do you know do you know if it's .com or .org uh, I can. I'll up. I'll poke around, guys, um, and list it in the in the comments below uh, where you can get Chelsea's book, which I put it in the chat right now. Bible journaling with kids .com. I'll put that in the comments, and then we'll also put Visual Faith Ministries link below as well because they they are a great website and they they're amazing. Yeah. Um, or they'll answer all your questions. Everything is free. They're just really in. They have a heart to just share this method and they've been around for the, one of the ladies that leads it is the editor of my book and she's so, so sweet. So obviously I, I go to her, I go to my, my people that I know and love. So, yeah. Well, that's awesome. Those are some great questions guys. Um, and I'll make sure we get those links in the, in the description below. And it looks like somebody look for it. It's dot org. So yes. visual faith. Org. M I N dot org. Um, right. They're a great resource for you guys. Um, and I'm hoping to do something similar with the Bible journaling association. Yes. Um, and to what's really going to be initially is like a calendar where you can go to find stuff like that in your area. So it'll just be the United States initially. Yes. I've uh, seen you collecting. 
And you've been doing such a good job at listening to God. I remember like when you first felt this reading challenge stirring on your heart of months ago when you were going, oh, is this really what I'm supposed to do, God? And it's just been so cool to see God use you and to see you flourish in that in that time. And I remember one time talking to you, you were like, oh, yeah, th- I'm feeling like the challenges of life right now, but I'm still going to do this because God put it on my heart to do. And sometimes we do just have to charge through even with those trials and things that are happening. Um, he's speaking to you. So thank you for being obedient. You're thank welcome. you for doing this. <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. And I mean, it's just, it's so awesome and rewarding to see ladies grow and to really get it because it's just, I feel like applying the word is such a need for our generation and it's not um, often taught. And so I really wanted to put it out there for other ladies to learn how to do it and hopefully share that with others. So anyways, thank you so much for joining me, Chelsea. It's such a, it's such a privilege to have you on. She's just, she's a speaker. She's a writer. (laughs) Here she is. Stop it. <laughs> I have amazing friends, guys. I don't know if you knew that. I have amazing friends. <laughs> so, all right. Thank you guys for joining us. And we'll um, we'll have this. Uh, I'll put that information in the description below. So, thank you for joining us, Chelsea. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Bye, everyone.